Jesus was a carpenter. That was his trade. Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. It's that set of values, traits, I guess trade, that you will see throughout his existence, if I could say it like that. If you look in John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And if we drop down to verse 14, we see this is referencing Jesus. Now, at the time of John 1.1, 1, 1, he wasn't known as Jesus. It was the second person of the Godhead. But we now know him as Jesus the Christ. But the idea that I would like to discuss in a few moments this afternoon is Jesus is the master builder. There would be no greater carpenter in this world's existence. He framed the physical worlds. The idea came from God the Father, but it was the second person of the Godhead that executed that will to create all things physical, out of nothing. And eventually he would come dwell and tabernacle in the flesh, which would bring about, ultimately, the second thing that he would build. We find in, in Matthew chapter 16, verse... 16 through 18. Or really, verse 17. Jesus answered and said unto Peter, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, referencing the, the statement of Jesus' deity, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So Jesus built the worlds, and he promised to build his church. We sang, a few moment, we sang a few moments ago, I think it was 37, about Jesus building his church. And we know that he did. And we know that he is the head of that church. That spiritual institution of the body of the saved. And he has laid out rules and regulations as to far as how we are to enter that church how we are to conduct ourselves within that church. Which brings us to the third thing that he has built for us. And that is our home in heaven. Not only did he promise to build the church, but he promised to prepare a place for us. In John chapter 14, starting in verse 1, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. So at that particular point in time, those mansions did not exist for those who would be saved. But they will exist. And I venture to say they do exist. It's concerning the way we look at time and must be governed by it. Verse 3, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether ye go, whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. So he promised to build the church, but he also promised to build mansions. Now, obviously, this isn't a physical thing. This would be a spiritual dwelling place for the souls of the saved. And not just those of the church. There are two other dispensations that this world has known. And all the saved under each of those respective dispensations will also inhabit eternity with us. Who are saved un under the law of Christ. But that was a promise he had made. He also promised there in verse 4 
Where I go, ye know. And the way, ye know. So he even showed us the way how to get there. Verse 5, Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh through the Father but by me. So not only has he given us these promises, he's fulfilled them. He even pointed the way to receive those promises. Now this afternoon, if, if a home in heaven is appealing to you and you're not a Christian, why not? Why not render obedience to the gospel of Christ? Become a Christian, live faithfully unto death, and these mansions that Jesus promised to build for those who are faithful, one of which will be yours. As, an, as a child of God, perhaps you have allowed sin back into your life. If you allow that sin to go unrepented of, you've lost your mansion. You can look at it this way, you'll be evicted. That's not a pleasant thought. You think nowadays, whenever we don't pay rent, or we don't pay mortgage, some folks come a-knocking trying to collect their payment well thankfully Jesus has already made our payment his precious blood was shed to remove our sins all we have to do is fulfill our side of that bargain and to live faithfully for him now certainly that can be difficult at times but it's expected of us if we are to receive these great blessings and that is ultimately the home in heaven so if you have the need to become a Christian this afternoon or to be restored as a faithful member of the church, why not come as together we stand and sing?